I uh, was having a hard time sleeping last night, so I was yeah. listening to your book, When the Body Says No. Oh, yeah. And I was, it took me back to when I got really sick, mm. and your book was what helped me mm. know that I needed to do trauma work. Right. Otherwise, I would have continued to just try to do the medical route. Yeah. This is wrong. This is wrong. What specialist do I go to now? Yeah, what yeah. specialist do I go to now? So yeah. it, it took me back to... Uh, how 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 well, I uh, found you and how our paths crossed. Well, I'm always so glad uh, it's, to it's know that. It's a fantastic book. Yeah, I think it, yeah, it was public. I don't think I'm saying anything new than what you haven't already said. It's not quite true, because since I wrote that book, there's been a lot more science. For example, mitochondria that you talk about so uh, astutely here. I don't know nothing about mitochondria. So th there's much more information about the the general themes are similar. But there's much more information now about the actual physiology of things, which you um, pay tremendous attention to. Here. So it's not true that you're not saying anything. <laughs> well, what was your first impression when you read the book? Okay. Besides writing an email to me saying that I had misquoted you, that I mean, yeah. chapter one, remember I quoted yeah, you yeah. and you're like, Amy, you got the wrong book. Yeah. That, that comes from myth of normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I felt so bad. I felt so silly. <laughs> huh. Why? Because... What, what, what's, the, what, what, what's the headline here? Human being makes a mistake. <laughs> Big deal. <Yeah. laughs> Human being makes a mistake. Right. And this quote's Gobbler uh, yeah. right, and he's reading your book. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, so I, I read the book, um, obviously with uh, two-pronged intention. One is just to absorb the information. The other is to write the forward for it. And uh, what I was struck by is what, what I mentioned before, is your um, astute awareness of the latest science and how you um, meld that science uh, with kind of the intuitive wisdom and also how you include your own experience. You know, so look, those are the three salient impressions and, and also the very practical uh, advice you give to people, this is not a theoretical work. It's, it's a work such as, you know, I want my work books to be as well. It's a healing agent. And that's what we need to do. Uh, people don't just need information, they also need concrete steps how to move forward. That was very important for me and it took me a long time to figure out how do I, how do I do all that? How do I weave my story in without making it about me? Because it's not about me. Well, it isn't, but as you know, in all my books, I do include my own story, and that's because there's nothing in it about either of us. So every time you tell your own story, you're telling everybody's story. And people really appreciate that. Otherwise, you're like the expert talking about them. <laughs> there's nothing like being the patient yourself. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, and for me, being the parent, because yeah. that's how I started my book, was sharing that moment with Miguel, okay. where he's telling me, that he yeah. plans to kill me the next day. Right. And so for me, since that moment, that was when I became so focused on being practical with the information that I was sharing. Yeah. Because that's what I had to have back then. Not the theories, not the evidence-based research. Yeah. God bless all of that, but yeah. I need something because I've got a kid who's out of control. Yeah. And then I've got my own health and it's out of control. Yeah. And so that practical aspect has been very important for me. How long did it take you to write the book? A year. One year? One year to actually write. And the research before? Since 2008. Yeah. yeah. I mean, this is my life work. Yeah. This is everything that I've experienced yeah. and then learned and gotten trained in and it's bringing it all together, which is why I actually rewrote the whole book seven times because I would write something and I'd be like, it's just not, it's not mm. bringing in this piece the right mm. way. It's not bringing in the whole picture or it's not leading the reader along in a way that I won't lose them. I, to I, totally, I totally get it. Uh, the Myth of Normal, which is about 500 plus it's pages. It's encyclopedia. <laughs> but its original version was double the line. Yes. And then we not only had to go through it to actually cut it in half, but we also rewrote it and rewrote it and rewrote it. Uh, to make sure that not only that the concepts are right, but that you're communicating them. Exactly.
Yeah. It's how we communicate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's been some great trauma books out there. Yeah. And for many of them, I find that they're overwhelming for people. Mm. They can't get through them. Well, some of them are very academic. Some are very academic, yeah. and then some are re-traumatizing in the stories that they that they share. So I wanted to find that balance of mm. I know that I need to bring in stories mm. in order to pull people in, but yet not re-traumatize them with stories because we get bombarded with stories in the media, on TV, social yeah. media now. I'm not sure that I agree with the phrase re-traumatizing. Mm. I mean, when somebody gets upset, that doesn't mean they're being re-traumatized. That they're not sustaining a new wound. This is true. Maybe it's they're... Poking an old wound. Uh, maybe maybe poking an old one. Mm -hmm. What is true, that if you don't offer some resolution, right. uh, then you're creating a problem for them, but you're not re-traumatized. Sure. Yeah. And I think with the level of disconnect that people are living, yeah. they don't know how to bring themselves to that resolution yeah. once they've had something stirred up. Well, that's where I think our role comes into it. Yeah. Is this this actually here's here's a way to go forward. Here's a here's you can do it sometimes very simply, as in some of the exercises that that you recommend in this book, and sometimes through more complex and ongoing therapy, but there's gotta be a way to address all these issues, not just to know about them, yeah. Right. The information will not change us. This no. is <laughs> this yeah. is going back to what you've said in the very beginning. Yeah. I would love for you to sign three books. I've oh. got lots of books, but yeah. I'll just have you sign sure. three books, of course. and then we'll figure out who will get the the books. I've got a pen right here if you, if you sure. need one. And then you will sign one and give it to me. Yes! Oh, I would love to sign your book. <laughs> well, this is certainly an um, impressive set of... Um, of um, oh, boy. Oh, endorsement is good for you. It's, I'm very blessed to have a lot of support. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. All no, right. not that one. I've already signed. Oh, you're signing it to I'm the sorry. others. Yes, all right. Yeah. All right, here. <coughs> what do I say to you? I don't know. You can just <laughs> sign your name if you want. You've already, you know. <laughs> I've already told you how uh, how much you, I appreciate it. If, if you don't say something beautiful, I'm gonna feel, I'm gonna feel rejected and, de and, de and, and devastated. <laughs> well, for all the lives that you are changing around the world, thank you. You have changed my life, hmm. and so that's what I am deeply grateful yeah. for. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a sort of constant line of mine. People come up to me and say. Your book changed my life, and my response is, maybe I should read it myself. <laughs> You'll probably get the same thing. 